India is a mega diverse country with thousands of rare endemic plants and animal species. Out of the total 34 hotspots all over the world, three are in India. But because of the anthropogenic activities and influx of population, most of the species are on the verge of extinction. Most of the endemic plant species have been extinct so far. Conservation scientists using various techniques that help us to preserve these precious plants of medicinal use and to overcome the growing demand. One of the techniques is plant tissue culture. Today I shall be talking about plant tissue culture and its applications in improving crops of importance. The field began way back in 1902 when a German botanist conceptualized on the concept of totipotency. This concept is based on the fact that each and every cell of the plant is capable of giving rise to an another individual plant and that plant is as similar or is true as true as any plant you find in the field. Plant tissue culture is a collection of techniques used to maintain or grow plant cells, tissues or organs under sterile conditions on a nutrient culture medium of known composition. Plant tissue culture is widely used to produce clones of a plant in a method known as micropropagation. The various steps of plant tissue culture are preparation of instruments and nutrient culture medium, sterilization of culture medium, preparation of explant, inoculation of explant, incubation for growth, acclimatization of plantlets, and transfer to pots. Preparation of instruments. Apparatus required for plant tissue culture are forceps, scissors, blade holders, disposable but sterile surgical blades or sharp scalpel, petri plates with two filter papers, a 500 milliliter beaker, three 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks, a 50 milliliter test tube, a box containing disposable pipette tips, pipettes and a thousand milliliter bottle with screw cap. First of all, it is important to take all the required apparatus in a spotlessly clean condition. These items are then wrapped in newspaper or brown paper with a knot at the side that has to be held by hand. These are then kept ready for autoclaving. Before performing plant tissue culture experiment, it is required to have clean and sterile culture vessels. Before using any glassware or plastic wares, these are first washed in a four step process. Firstly, all used glass and plastic wares with used cultures and media are autoclaved for about one hour. Then the glass and plastic wares are immersed in a tub full of chromic acid for 16 hours. After this, the glass and plastic wares are first rinsed with water to remove the chromic acid and then immersed in a tub full of detergent water and cleaned using hard nylon brushes. The glass and plastic wares are then immersed in another tub full of clean water and then the detergent is rinsed off. 
Finally, the glass and plastic wares are washed under running tap water kept in clean trays and put in an oven maintained at 60 to 80 degrees Celsius for drying. The dried glass wares are now ready for use. The next important process is preparation of a media which is to be used in the process of micropropagation. A medium for plant tissue culture will comprise of a group of macro elements, a group of micro elements, vitamins, amino acids, and most importantly sucrose, which serves as a source of carbon and which is the carbohydrate for the plant. The amounts of salts to be taken have to be precisely weighed as per the reported formulations and these have to be dissolved in deionized water. Care has to be taken to avoid precipitation of salts as it prevents the availability of salts to the plants. Thus, salts with higher solubility are first dissolved. Adjustment of the pH of the medium. Generally, plants can take up nutrients at a pH ranging from 5.6 to 5.8. After the medium attains the desired pH, it is ready to be poured into 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks or into 50 milliliter test tubes as 100 milliliter or 20 milliliter aliquots. Semi-solid medium has to be prepared. The method followed is to weigh 0.75 to 0.8 grams of agar-agar. This amount has to be optimized to provide optimum moisture to the cultures. Pouring of medium. A 100 milliliter medium is carefully poured into each 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks and plucked using cotton plugs made of non-absorbent cotton wool covered with muslin cloth and tied at the top allowing easy holding of the plug while inoculation. Sterilization of culture medium is autoclaving. An autoclave is a device used to sterilize equipment and supplies by subjecting them to high pressure saturated steam. The media prepared and the different instruments made ready for use are autoclaved for 20 minutes at high temperature that is 120 degrees Celsius and pressure at 15 Pascal. These parameters are just right to sterilize the instruments and the media without degrading its composites such as sucrose, etc. Preparation of explant. Different kinds of explants such as petals, leaves, buds, ovaries, seeds, anthers and nodal segments can be used for plant tissue culture because each and every cell of the plant is capable of giving rise to a new individual. However, care must be taken to collect these explants from disease-free, healthy and actively growing plants, preferably having some meristematic areas of high cell activity. Immediately after collection, the explants are placed in clean water to avoid the entrance of air bubbles, microbes and contaminants from the cut or exposed parts and to avoid browning due to phenolic oxidation. These explants are then brought into a laboratory for surface sterilization. For this, the explants are first cut into smaller size using a scatter or a pair of scissors and then placed in a petri plate containing clean water.
The surface of the explants is then brushed clean with a mild detergent such as Tween 20 as a wetting agent with a sable hair brush. After cleaning the surface, the explants are picked up and dropped into a glass or plastic vessel containing a mild solution of a fungicide or an antibiotic. The explants are then swirled for a few minutes and rinsed several times with clean and sterile deionized water. Finally, the explants are immersed in sterile deionized water and taken into inoculation chamber. Now, our explant is ready for next process of inoculation. Prior to entering the inoculation chamber through the double door, it is important to wear a clean cotton lab coat and take an air shower. Inoculation means transferring plant specimen into the media under aseptic conditions. Preparation of Laminar Hood The laminar hood is a special equipment for inoculation. Shut the shutter of the laminar hood. Switch on the UV light for about 30 minutes. While the UV light can kill all the microbes, it is highly dangerous for human eyes and skin. Therefore, the shutter has a black sheet and is not opened until the UV light is switched off. After 30 minutes, switching off of the UV light, switch on the chamber lights, open the shutter and then switch on the airflow. Prior to operating the laminar hood, it is essential to wear a clean and sterile face mask and a cap. The panel of the laminar that faces us has a high efficiency particulate air filter. The explants are washed with 70% ethanol for a few seconds and then treated with a mild mercuric chloride solution for a few minutes. A general thumb rule is to use a mild solution for a longer duration rather than a strong solution for a shorter duration. After the sterilizing agent treatment, the solution is decanted into the waste beaker and the explants washed several times with sterile deionized water to remove all traces of mercury chloride. All the apparatus are dipped in the 70% ethanol, flamed using the lighted spirit lamp and allowed to cool. Now, after cooling the forceps, the explants are carefully picked and placed in the petri plate with filter paper so that all the excess water content will be absorbed. Surface of the explants, which were exposed to mercury chloride, are removed with the help of surgical blade. Each nodal segment is carefully inserted into the medium contained in the test tube and care is taken to avoid the explants from touching the rim of the flask, which is again flamed and after that cap is put back at the mouth to seal it tightly. Finally, name of the plant, medium and date of inoculation is labelled onto the surface of the test tube.
The cultures are now ready to be incubated in the culture lab at optimum conditions of 16 hours light alternating with 8 hours darkness. 25 to 27 degrees Celsius temperature, 40% relative humidity and it is monitored timely. After a few days, which may range from 5 to 15 days, all cultures with either bacterial or fungal contaminants are removed and the corresponding cultures are allowed to grow further. After a period of time, one ends up with a large number of shoots in a single flask. Once the shoots have grown to a certain appreciable height of about 3 to 4 centimeters, they are rooted. Generally, auxins are used in the culture medium to induce rooting in each of these shoots. Once the shoots are rooted, these have to be hardened for acclimatization in the open. Now the tissue culture raised plantlets, TCPs, are transferred to greenhouse or outdoor conditions. And they are subjected to different types of shocks like temperature, humidity, nutrition, carbon dioxide and airflow shock. The greenhouse and fields have substantially lower relative humidity, higher light intensity and septic environment and are therefore stressful to the TCPs because they have been drawn out of their comfort zone of in vitro conditions. After rooting and growth of plantlets up to 3 to 4 inches, shift these to other potting mixture containing garden soil, sand and well decomposed farmyard manure in ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1. Other medium like soil rite, vermiculite, perlite and cocoa peat can also be used for preparation of potting mixture. After 45 to 60 days, these acclimatized plantlets can be shifted to the outdoor conditions. These plants are now ready for the harsh conditions effectively with very low mortality. Importance of plant tissue culture the process of propagation facilitates the production of a large number of disease-free quality plantlets independent of seasons. In fact, plant tissue culture has several applications extending from mass propagation of plants by micropropagation or in vitro culture, generation of quality planting material production of phytochemicals and high-value pharmaceuticals, cosmetics and food additives, production of improved and tailor-made crops through transgenic, for example, Bt cotton, and conservation of endangered, threatened and rare species of plants.